Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again. Hello there, everybody. This is Jay Snook uh, for your GSMC Sci-Fi Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Yes, uh, this is my first time doing this, so let's get started right away. So, um, a little bit about myself. I am a you know sci-fi fan. I watch a lot of sci-fi movies, sci-fi TV shows. Um, I've been into sci-fi for a very, very long time, so... Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to doing this. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So, for beginning, um, we had, I believe it was either last week or earlier this week, we got our first, well, we got our a new Bumblebee trailer. It wasn't the first. We'd got one before that. And this trailer, you know, basically you got to see a bit more of Bumblebee in action. Um, this trailer actually shows a lot of Transformers with Bumblebee, which I don't believe the last trailer was like that. You got to see there's going to be Optimus Prime and a bunch of other uh, Transformers show up. There's a lot more action in this trailer. Um, for those who don't know, Bumblebee is going to be a prequel to the previous, what is it, five, six Transformers films we've gotten now. So it's going to be a prequel to that. And it's going to... Uh, take place in the 80s, I believe, when Bumblebee first came to Earth. And, you know, um, I have to say, personally, the some of the previous, more recent Transformer films have been kind of disappointing. I have actually seen all of them. Um, and, yeah, like the last one, the last night was, uh, it was just, well, it was disappointing, let's put it that way, <laughs> in a nutshell. So, um so when I heard of them, they're doing a Bumblebee film originally, I was like, eh, I don't know if this is a good idea. I don't know if we should be doing this. But I do have to say this. The uh, trailers are giving me some hope for this movie. And this new trailer, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Um, you get to see, I think, one of Bumblebee's first, uh, you know, owners, friends, something like that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which was there, but it seems about right or something around that. And... Um, yeah, I don't think you actually hear Bumblebee talk in this, but you get a bit more of a feel of what the movie's going to be about, where it's going to be going, um, how it kind of like, you know, sets up for the... Because it takes place, I believe, 20-something years before the first movie. And um, yeah, I, w I was really impressed with this trailer. I was like, man, it looks really awesome. Bumblebee looks really cool. Uh, getting to see a lot more of the Transformers is really cool because in the first trailer, we really didn't get to see that at all. We got to see, you know... Bumblebee a little bit. We got to see, um, you know, the person who finds Bumblebee who kind of becomes Bumblebee's friend. Some action scenes there. But we had seen nothing about any other Transformers in this at all. So, yeah. Um, and, yeah, I just think that this is going to be a pretty cool movie, actually. I, I really am looking forward to it. I'm really excited. Um, but, you know, who knows? So, yeah, so this trailer um, is on YouTube. It's been on YouTube, and um, it seems like so far fans are really excited for this movie. I know I am. That's for sure. And, um, yeah, so you just get to see a lot more of a feel of the movie. The special effects look really good. The robots look really, really good. Um, the way they're just, you know, doing everything in general, um, I think it's going to be leaps and bounds from the original. I don't know if Michael Bay has any part of this one. I'm not sure. Again, it is a prequel. So it's hard to say um, exactly, you know, uh, how, where it's, I, I, yeah. So, um, yeah, so basically the gist is, again, this film takes place in the 80s. Um, and, yeah, it's just kind of, you see Bumblebee's humble beginnings. Um, it's going to have a real good cast of people in it, of course. So really looking forward to that movie. And I believe it comes out sometime next year. Yeah, I believe that's what's going to be happening with that. So um, I wish I had more to say about that, but all I really can say is that we, we got, you know, a new 
uh, Bumblebee 2 trailer. And um, yeah, it just gave us much more fans much more of a feel of where the movie is and where it's going to be going. And I think this is going to definitely be better than some of the previous um, films that we have gotten in the Transformers universe. And it may not, it, it, I definitely think it's going to have the potential to be good. So if you haven't checked that trailer out yet, you can check it out on YouTube. And um, that's really the most I have to say about that for now. I wish I had more to say, but that's really all I have. So we will just jump right into my next topic, which, um, again, a couple of weeks ago, we got another Predator movie. And as far as Predator goes with me, um, I've definitely watched most of the Predator movies. I've watched the original a couple of times with Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, the sequel that took place in the city. Um, I did watch um, Alien vs. Predator, which I thought was pretty good. I didn't see Alien vs. Predator 2, but... I've heard it mixed things about it anyway, like I probably didn't miss out. So, you know, so I, I've, I didn't see that one. And then um, Predators, which I think had Adrian Brody in it and came out, had to have been, God, probably like maybe a couple of years ago, maybe a bit more, where a couple of people this time, this one, uh, this last Predators film was different from previous ones because I think people ended up on the Predator homeworld and I think they were being hunted there. So... There's a, bit, a little bit of context about that film. I heard it was good. I just haven't honestly had a chance to see it. But, um, you know, like I like many people, when I heard, oh, they're doing another Predator movie, I'm like, uh, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe that's not a good idea. <laughs> we'll see. But, um, yeah, so I, I, I missed seeing it when they did a, a special screening for it, but I did see it a week or two later. And um, first impressions of it, um, it's definitely different. From previous films that's for sure it's definitely different it has differences uh, from other films in a lot of different ways for starters there's more than one predator in this movie and um, it seems the trailers of course show that it's just another film where hey you know there's predator but there's also some new super predator going around and it looks like the predator has come you know to wreak havoc on earth again and its people so it looks like your normal, you know, average Predator movie. But um, having seen it, and before I get in deep into the movie, I do want to let you know I'm going to get a little bit spoilery into certain things of the movie. So if you haven't seen it, the, here's your warning now that it is going to be happening. So uh, the movie starts out actually where we see a Predator ship crash land on Earth. And I guess there's another Predator following it, which turns out to be the Super Predator. And it actually has a good cast of people. Um, I believe Michael Keegan, no, yeah, Michael Keegan is in it. And uh, it's got, you know, um, a number of diff uh, different people in it that have been in other films recently. And um, the movie, yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely different. There's a lot of action there. There's a lot of sci-fi elements, you know, spaceships, alien weaponry, alien languages. And I guess there's a group of uh, people who, you know, have come in taken prisoner because they've all kind of like you know done something really bad in the service and in a way they kind of become uh you know people who uh sort of are supposed to take the predator on and um i will say um that yeah the film goes in a different direction than i expected it to because it turns out the predator that comes to earth isn't actually the hey i just want to kill humans and you know collect their skulls and you know, destroy them kind of predator. He's actually turns out to be some kind of uh, traitor to the other predators because the other predators want to, I guess, come to our planet, take it over, and really basically in a nutshell, just like, you know, make the planet their own. And it looks like this predator that's here is actually trying to stop that from happening. So yeah, the character takes a very different turn. And I think they had actually said in at least one or two of the previous Predator movies, that's what one of the Predators were doing. So that was kind of interesting. I don't really know if that made sense though, because at least in the first Predator, that Predator just wanted to, you know, kill people. It brought him a lot of joy and it's what he did for most of the movie until Schwarzenegger stopped him at the end. And then it looked like in Predator 2, that Predator might even been a little bit more off than the previous Predator. You know, so, but they did seem a bit more friendly in Alien vs. Predator, so it definitely creates a shift for the Predator character. It really does. And this new Predator, I guess, in a nutshell, was um, made in a lab. So there's more to this Predator, I guess, than, like, it's taller, it's bigger, it's stronger, it's more dangerous. And, um, yeah, it's definitely um, 
different from the previous Predator movies. So um, we are going to take a short break really quick, and then we'll delve back more into that movie. So, um, yeah, we'll be back with you in a minute. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Hello there, everybody. We are back uh, to the sci-fi, GSMC Sci-Fi Podcast. So, yes, I started on the Predator movie, and I can definitely talk more about it and glad to. So, um, yeah, so like I said, this movie was very different from uh, previous Predator films where there's almost literally like a good Predator and a bad Predator. And uh, there's an interesting twist, too, where um, in a, uh, like, jungle somewhere, like, one of these uh, soldier characters, you know, finds two things from the Predator and sends it to his house, which his son finds. So there's that twist, too, of, like, where the one evil Predator kind of gets interested in his son because he sees his son is smarter than he seems. And so it's a battle first of Predator against Predator. And the one Predator, the bigger, stronger Super Predator not its true name, but what I'm calling it, um, takes out the one predator. Um, and so then it becomes the job of kind of like some of these soldiers to try to stop the super predator before, you know, before it goes ahead and, uh, you know, takes, uh, takes, completes its mission and, you know, tries to start, um, you know, doing damage to the world. So that's basically what the movie is in a nutshell. And, as the movie progresses, um, it's the soldiers going against this predator. Um, at one point, they do finally stop said predator. And they find out, too, that the good predator um, had brought uh, some kind of weapon to Earth to help uh, humanity out. And they're wondering, well, what is this? We're not sure what it is. There's a big mystery about that. And um, after the super predator is destroyed, uh, they find out that, you know, there was this weird coffin that supposedly has some kind of, you know, weapon in it. And um, again, spoiler coming on, but it's basically a, I guess, like, it looks like a, like, wrist bracelet, but when it's put on, it's actually a, like, piece of armor to help them, you know, kind of protect humanity from future predators. So the movie kind of implies that, hey, there might be future predators that try to come to Earth to um, complete the mission, you know, that this one super predator was trying to do, right? To, because um, it's said in the movie, like, they believe we're an, like, you know, we're endangered species and, you know, our planet is, you know, kind of not as good shape as it should be. So, yeah, I would recommend this movie. I enjoyed it. I liked it. It was a lot of fun. Like I said, it has some few, like, twists and turns there from previous predator movies because most of the predator movies have been more simpler if predator comes to, you know, either jungle or city just starts taking people out and it's up to, you know, one lone person to stop Predator before, you know, harms anyone else. So um, it's very different. Um, I believe it's been mixed. Fans are mixing this one. Some really, really like it. Some aren't insanely excited about it, but it's a film I would recommend, um, at least for a matinee. I wouldn't say, you know, pay, see it in 3D or, you know, pay a huge chunk of money for it. But I think overall you'll enjoy it, you know, because I know I did. So uh, that's all I have to say about that movie. Now, um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is The Orville Season 2, which um, The Orville is a show by Seth MacFarlane. It's on Fox. It just had its first season. It ended, actually, I believe, in around November or December of uh, last year. It sounds about right. Um, 
and I could be wrong, but I believe that's right. And so this is a show that, um, you know, has a sci-fi feel to it. It takes place hundreds of years in the future. And um, I was actually at Comic-Con. I got to go to a panel for season two and see some of the cast. And what happened in this show, which was kind of interesting, its first season was it was originally marketed as a comedy. And I was one of the people for the pilot of this show. I wasn't too impressed because it wasn't that it was a comedy. It was that all the jokes were falling flat. It was trying too hard to be funny. It was too silly. It was too just kind of too ridiculous for me. But I hung on. And as the first season progresses, it actually shifts from comedy, comedy, comedy to drama. And once it makes that shift, I was hooked. I thought the show was great. It talked about topics that um, there was an episode where they end up on a planet that was kind of like 21st century Earth where everybody's actually wearing little like uh, up arrow and down arrow shirts. So it's like like and dislike. So that was really kind of cool. Um, there's episode. There was an episode where they end up in a zoo, you know, where um, uh, the captain and his first mate end up in a zoo together, like, you know, with all these other species. So that was really cool. And there was even uh, the finale, which was really cool, where um, they encounter a planet where, like, um, the um, first mate, uh, she helps someone. And what happens, like, the, the planet, this planet, like, you know, fades away and then fades back every so many days or weeks but when it does it's been hundreds of years and like you know have passed since this has happened so it goes to where like you know everybody thinks that like you know the first mate is like this like kind of godly figure and we get to see like how that affects the planet good and bad and it was a really amazing episode i thought it was kind of a short season only 12 episodes to 13 and uh, Seth MacFarlane himself, you know, was kind of like, you know, a little bummed at first that it got marketed the way it did. But as the show progressed, it got marketed, you know, the way it was supposed to as a drama. And um, it's another show I'd highly recommend. I really, really like it. And it's no secret that Seth MacFarlane himself has been kind of a pretty good size, you know, Star Trek and sci-fi fan himself. Um and it took a while for season two to get announced, but it finally did. And again, at Comic-Con, which I was lucky to be at for my uh, first year this year in July, you know, they had a panel and they showed um, a trailer for season two. And it looks like it's going to be a really amazing season. Most of the crew is going to be back. We're going to have Bordis. We're going to have, you know, uh, Ed Mercer, the captain and his first mate. And, um... You know, what's going to be basically happening, I think, this season, a lot of things are going to be happening for starters. But one big thing that uh, they show in the trailer early on, which, again, you can see on YouTube. So this trailer is available on there is, uh, you know, where they're going to be having they're going to run into a planet where um, it's never really run into, like, you know, humans or their kind of like, you know, um, alliance before. So they're going to have a first contact situation. So that's going to be a really big deal. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, the trailer does show a little bit of comedy, which, you know, it is still kind of a part of the show. But um, at the same time, I think it's going to be really amazing. Um, there's a lot of action in it. And a lot of drama. Um, it looks like there's parts where Ed Mercer, you know, might end up um, being held captive by some species, which is definitely an interesting twist there. And yeah, I watched it again today and we get to see um, just like a lot of things going on with the, you know, different characters and situations. And um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to this show. I'm a huge fan of this show. If you were kind of like me in the beginning and you were iffy about the show, or you're like, hey, I'm not sure I want to check that out. I would highly suggest give it another shot. Give it another chance because um, I haven't regretted it. I haven't looked back. You know, I've liked the show a lot. I'm going to be a little bold saying this, but I kind of like the show better than Star Trek Discovery. Now, don't get me wrong. I've heard Star Trek Discovery is good and I need to give another shot. I agree. I probably do. But um, yeah, but again, the Orville is on Fox. I don't think there's an official release date release date for season two yet. I actually no, that's not true. I did hear today at least the premiere episode of season two is going to be on December thirtieth. So that's when that's going to premiere, and I think the rest of the season is going to be in two thousand nineteen. So um, yeah, so we have uh that coming up, and um, I think it's going to be really amazing. Um, because yeah, season one just really blew me away, and you know, getting to see the cast at Comic Con, they were really cool, really nice people. They were glad to talk to their you know uh fans. They were happy they had all the fans they had. Seth MacFarlane was really happy to have all the fans he had, and. Uh, 
yeah, I would just highly, highly recommend if you haven't checked this show out, give it a chance and a shot, and I doubt you will regret it. So we're going to jump to another commercial break, and we will be back with you in a few moments. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hello there, everybody. We are back. So, um, you know, since this is a sci-fi podcast, I will spend a little bit of time talking about uh, Star Trek. So there was one big thing of Star Trek news that has been hitting the net um, for a while, and there isn't much known about it, but there was, I think, a Star Trek... um, I want to say it was convention, but it was something like that where uh, uh, Sir Patrick Stewart showed up uh, surprisingly, no no fans knew he was going to be there and announced he's coming back as Jean-Luc Picard. Um, I believe it's on his own show, but I'm not 100% sure about this. But, I, I, you know, like many fans, I heard this news and I'm like, that's really awesome. I think I can't say he was the best captain just because there have actually been a lot of good captains. I mean, Benjamin Sisko was a really good captain in his own right. Catherine Janeway it was an amazing captain in her own right. She was really an, just an amazing, wonderful captain. And um, so, yeah, so that's some really big Star War, uh, Star Trek news that is, you know, been hitting the internet right now. And uh, I will jump into, because when I was at Comic-Con, I did get to go to that panel as well. Um, Star Trek Discovery also has gotten a season two order, and that season two order got picked up sooner than the Orville did. And um, so basically in this show, what's been happening is, um, it's a new crew, new ship. It's, um, I've heard it's very more female centric. So there's a lot more powerful female characters. On. They're not like previous Star Trek shows haven't had that, but this, um, is following in that vein and it has that as well. Um, and what I saw for it, there's going to be a lot more action, a lot more suspense, um, a lot more drama. There's going to be a lot more um, interesting, you know, powerful fight scenes going on here, and a lot more danger too um, with this, you know, crew going on here. Uh, when the cast was there, you know, Doug Jones was there, who has been in a lot of different sci-fi stuff in the past. Um, he seemed to be really excited to be for the second season. A lot of the crew, cast and crew were very excited for season two, you know, because and. Like I said, this show has had, has a good fan base. I, mean, I think it started a little bumpy. I mean, I know my issues for it at first were that it's supposed to be before the original series, but everything looks so much more high techy and nice and advancy. And you know, if advancy is really a word, which it's not, but that's just what I said. And um, and it's got like you know, the Klingons look a lot more advanced and different than they have on previous shows. Um, and it just I don't know, like, I just, for whatever reason, I couldn't get into it too much, but a lot of fans have, you know, a lot of fans are really excited for this show, and um, it's been doing pretty well so far. I believe it's still on the CBS All Access is the way you can watch it, but yeah, that did get a season two order, so that show is uh, coming back. I don't know if there's been a release date for that one yet. I want to say... 
there might be something going on as far as maybe in the next coming months or in the next year. 2019 is probably more realistic because I think they do bigger season orders like 18 episodes, 20 episodes, something like that. So, um, so that's some really big sci-fi news we have there for all you Star Trek fans out there. And, um, really as far as, um, other science fiction news right now, um, Oh yeah, well, one other real thing of uh, news that's going on as well, it's also sci-fi related, it's Star Wars, but it's sci-fi related, is, um, you know, Disney is doing uh, their streaming service, which comes out sometime next year, and they're doing a live action Star Wars show that Jon Favreau is directing, and I think he's helping create it, um, and not a whole lot is known about it besides it's going to be a live action show. Um, I think it's come out now that it's going to have deal with the Mandalorians, which the Mandalorians, for those who don't know, are like, you know, what Boba Fett was, what Jango Fett was. And you get to see a lot more of the uh, Mandalorians and their culture and their history and the way they are on um, Star Wars, the Clone Wars, which also is getting a final season um that was big news at Comic-Con that's coming around. And, uh, yeah, that's a show I need to watch. I've heard from a lot of Star Wars fans that uh, The Clone Wars is an amazing show. It, it was six seasons so far. And, you know, I just, I sadly haven't had a chance to watch that one yet. But what I did watch that also goes deep into The Mandalorians is a Star Wars Rebels, which just ended recently on uh, Disney XD. And that show blew me away. I like that show a lot more than I thought I would. Um, it takes place... You know, a couple of years before Star Wars Episode 4, 5, and 6, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. And uh, delved with a lot of new characters, but had a lot of cool Easter eggs of familiar characters like Lando. And we get to see, you know, uh, Darth Vader in there a little bit and all of that. And the last bit of Star Wars news I will have as we are coming into the final moments here is that uh, there is another new Star Wars show that's coming out, and I believe it's coming out the next couple of weeks on Disney XD again. Dave Filoni, who has done the previous ones of Star Wars uh, Rebels and before that Star Wars The Clone Wars, is behind this show, which is called Star Wars Resistance. And um, this show is supposed to take you know place in that 30-year gap before um, Star Wars Episode Seven, The Force Awakens. And I believe it's been revealed that it comes out like, it takes place like six months before that. There is a trailer for this out now, again on YouTube. And um, I have to say, like a number of fans, I'm kind of disappointed. The animation looks really kind of weird and cartoony and almost sloppy and choppy. Um, and it's a new unknown character again who joins the Resistance. Uh, I think we see a bit of Poe Dameron in there. And uh, we see, you know, First Order Troopers and BB-8. And um, it's definitely an action-packed trailer. But after, you know, being so blown away by uh, Star Wars Rebels, which was computer animation, I don't even know if this follows that computer animation format. I think this follows more along the lines of, like, cell animation, like drawn animation, at least it looked like in the trailer. And, yeah, I don't know how other fans feel about this, but... Sadly, watching the trailer myself, which I've watched a few times now, I was disappointed. I, because first of all, doing six months before when, you know, how Rebels ended where it was around the time before episode four. And there's a 30-year gap between, for fans who don't know this and people who don't know this, it's a 30-year gap between Star Wars Return of the Jedi and Star Wars The Force Awakens. So there's 30 years they could have used to do this show. And for some reason, they decided we're going to do it in um, six months before the movie, which is, I don't know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me just there. I don't really understand why or where that's going from, where, where, why they made that choice. And I don't know. I mean, my hope for it isn't that high right now for the show. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm proven wrong. I hope the show does really well, and it just maybe just the, the trailer just you know didn't give uh, what it meant to give you know the portray what it meant to portray because I've seen trailers like that in the past. I've seen trailers for shows and movies where I think you know they're going to be just big disappointments, and I'm proven wrong. So 
Yeah, um, I hope I'm wrong about this one too, but time will tell. And like I said, I think it's in the next coming weeks. That first episode premieres on Disney XD, I believe. Um, and of course, I'd love to you know hear in the comments uh, once this goes live, what are your thoughts about that and the other things I have talked about. So other than that, I believe we have come to the uh, end of our show for today. I did talk about a bit more than I meant to, but I had a lot of fun doing it and I'll definitely be with you guys again. Have yourself a wonderful rest of the evening and talk to you all later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program